Hello everyone, Riskmonger here. Welcome to the NLDS on MLB 17 The Show, where even though it says Washington Nationals versus the Chicago Cubs, it is in fact the divisional all-stars of the NL East and the NL Central. Here are the starters for today's game, NL Cy Young Award winner Max Scherzer and St. Louis Cardinals ace Carlos Martinez. In the first batter of the game, shortstop Zach Cozart played for the Reds in 17, but he won't represent the NL Central again next year since he signed a free agent deal with the Angels in the offseason. And Cozart leads off the game with a big fly to left over the head of Giancarlo Stanton playing out of position. Here's the starting lineup for the NL Central. You can pause the video here if you want to take a closer look. And the Central leads 1-0. But they wouldn't stop there after Joey Votto hit a double. Actual Cub Anthony Rizzo knocks a single up the middle to add to the lead. Votto would score easily with no throw from Christian Yelich, and it's 2-0 in favor of the Central. In the top of the fourth, breakout St. Louis outfielder Tommy Pham hits a solo home run to make it 3-0. Then the next inning, another actual Cub, Chris Bryant, comes up, with the Central already up 3-0. The third baseman knocks a huge homer to left, 453 feet according to the game. It's now 4-0 in favor of the Central. That lead wouldn't last long as in the bottom of the inning, NL MVP Giancarlo Stanton steps in, also playing his last game for his current divisional all-star team, as he was traded to the Yankees in the biggest blockbuster of the offseason. And he lines a drive past the diving Domingo Santana out on right field. It'll score one, and the throw to the plate is offline, so here's another run. Bryce Harper will score from first to make it 4-2. Next batter, D.H. Marcel Ozuna, another former Marlins star outfielder. We drive home Stanton from second with a single, and the lead is just one run. That would help chase starter Carlos Martinez, who gives way to Cubs longman Mike Montgomery, who lost all shot of a starting role in 2018 after last weekend's acquisition of Hugh Darvish. Monty wasn't able to stop the bleeding as Christian Yelich, another former Marlin who has departed for greener pastures, Loops a single with the bases loaded. The tying run will score. Here's the throw home from Pham. And the go-ahead run will score, as Yadier Molina can't handle the throw to the plate. Trey Turner got another RBI single for an insurance run. Now it's 6-4. to four. But then, something happened that the ring did not intend. Max Scherzer gets into trouble in the sixth and loads the bases. And who should enter in relief but Mark Leiter? who had a pretty decent rookie season with the Phillies, but who's only really on this team because I reserved a spot in the bullpen for a swingman, a primary reliever who also made a handful of starts. He's in the long release slot on the roster, which means the computer will put him in if a starter gets into trouble before five innings, pretty much without exception, which is why he's facing former NL Rookie of the Year and MVP Chris Bryant here, who's already homered in the game, and he does this. A huge grand slam, a 440-foot blast, his second homer of the game. The score is now 8-6 and a huge momentum swing. Leiter did stay in the game for a few innings to mop up his mess, and Giancarlo Stanton would get another run back on a homer, which set up a one-run save situation for breakout Brewers closer Corey Kniebel, who gives up a base runner but locks down the W, inducing a slick double play, unassisted by Scooter Jeanette and back to Votto to end the game. The player of the game, obviously Chris Bryant, the star slugger for the Capricorn Fantasy Astrology team hit two home runs, drove in five RBIs, and the Central takes a one game to nothing lead. Here's the final line score with Brian's picture. Pause it if you want some more information. And now we're moving right along to game two. And here's the lineup superimposed there for you. Here's the starters for tonight's contest, Steven Strasburg for the East, Jake Arrieta for the Central, both sporting their 2017 team's jerseys and both sporting fantastic beards. In the top of the first, here's Arietta against Bryce Harper, striking out the Libra outfielder. And here's a look at the full NL East lineup, which if you'll notice is fully comprised of Nationals and Marlins, as of 2017 that is. In the top of the second, here's Strasburg facing Domingo Santana with a man on, striking out the Brewers outfielder. And in the bottom of the inning, here's a nice defensive play from Zach Cozart, leaving his feet for the ground out. Cozart is slated to play third base for the Angels next year, so we won't see many of those kinds of plays from him next year. In the bottom of the fourth, strikeout victim Bryce Harper opens the scoring with a double, and then a ball that bounces right over Santana's head for an error. Good thing Andrew McCutcheon was there to back him up, playing center field. 
Later, former Marlon Giancarlo Stanton would pick up Harper from third with a hard hit ground ball to short. There's Cozart again getting some work, as you can't quite see Harper cross the plate. Then in the bottom of the fifth, current Marlin catcher JT Rio Muto lines a double into center over the leaping Scooter Jeanette. It's three to nothing, but Arietta would limit the damage, striking out Bryce Harper for the second time tonight. But Strauss was dealing as well, pitching a shutout through six, striking out Andrew McCutcheon. Oop, that's some good coverage. But the shutout wouldn't last, as red second baseman Scooter Jeanette blasts an opposite field homer, continuing his newfound power output. Now the score would get worse for the East, as star Leo outfielder Domingo Santana would homer off Nationals closer Sean Doolittle. That's right, Sean Doolittle, you heard right, more on him later. So the East turns it over to Philly's setup man Luis Garcia, who gets Kozar to ground out for the save and end the game. Here's the final line score where you can see Steven Strasburg was the player of the game. I didn't get his recap because of technical difficulties. And similar technical difficulties caused me to miss the intro to Game 3, but this is the first batter of Game 3, Nats leadoff hitter Trey Turner, lining one off Brewers ace Jimmy Nelson, but it caroms right to Chris Bryant, who completes the putout. Real World Nelson is actually injured right now, but it's a shoulder injury, it wasn't due to this type of play. Meanwhile, Mets starter Jacob deGrom pitches very well, striking out Anthony Rizzo, as we get a look at the rest of that East rotation. And the game remains scoreless until the sixth, when Nationals third baseman Anthony Rendon lines a single. He's the star hitter for the Gemini Fantasy Astrology team. And that was the only run of the game, as closer Sean Doolittle enters again for another save situation. Now, I awarded Doolittle the role of NLE's closer, even though he was outscored in fantasy points by a young Philly Hector Neris, because the Libra relief ace was acquired mid-season with the express purpose of being Washington's closer into the playoffs. And these are the playoffs, right? Also, maybe I have a soft spot for former Oakland A's. But this time, Dew would get it done. After giving up a double to Andrew McCutcheon, he strikes out Yadier Molina to earn the save and give the NL East a two games to one advantage. But it's DeGrom, another Gemini, who wins player of the game honors. He pitched just six and a third innings and gave up four hits and four walks, but struck out six and didn't allow a run, helping the NL East take a two games to one advantage. Here's the final line score for this pitcher's duel. Again, you can pause it here for a closer look. So now for game four, here's an artist rendering of the starters for this game. It's Chase Anderson, also of the Brewers, and Aaron Nola of the Phillies. I picked Nola mostly because there's just too many nationals on this pitching staff. And there's another one on offense, Bryce Harper, facing off against Reds first baseman Joey Votto. And in the top of the first, another star nationals hitter, Ryan Zimmerman, has the chance to break it wide open, but he strikes out instead leaving the first scoreless. Meanwhile, another reason I had Nola start this one is because he was truly the Phillies' ace in 2017, as opposed to a number three, albeit on a better team. Now in the second, a long-term NL Central star, Andrew McCutcheon, who was playing his final game for the NL Central Divisional All-Star squad, lines a fair ball down the left field side, a double that would open the scoring, but it would not end it, as another outfielder on the trading block, Domingo Santana, knocks a ground ball up the middle, that's going to score Kutch. Yes, it does. Fast forward to the sixth. It's now 3-1 NL Central. Zimmerman up again, and he lines an RBI, which means the tying run is on base, which means it's time for a pitching change. Lance Lynn, a starter for the Cardinals, and now a free agent. I moved him from the fifth starter spot to the long relief role for this elimination game. He'll face homegrown Nats star Anthony Rendon, and Lynn can't get out of the jam. Rendon with a gapper to score one. So the Central still has the lead, but they've seen enough of Lynn. The Central now goes with a more situational 2017 Cardinal with an L name, Tyler Lyons, the lefty. To face another lefty, Christian Yelich. And the Sagittarius outfielder does a little swinging bunt. Lyons can't handle it, and the game is tied. Then after a walk to number nine hitting Real Muto, up comes Trey Turner. They're going to let Lyons face him. And he walks him. Lyons has walked in the go-ahead run to bring up Bryce Harper. Of course, Lyons still in the game because lefty on lefty, worth it every time. But this time it works. Harper going down on strikes. But now it's 4-3 to three in favor of the East. And who should come in in the bottom of the sixth? 
But the pitcher I was referencing this whole time, Gio Gonzalez actually had the statistical advantage over Nola to be named as tonight's starter. But I did the next best thing and put him in the long relief slot. Thankfully, he gets to be used tonight. He will face Tommy Pham, and he will K Tommy Pham. Then he will induce a nice fielding play from Daniel Murphy to get out of the sixth with the one-run lead intact. Then in a strange turn of events, the East will bring in a different lefty, Jerry Blevins, to face Joey Votto. And the Mets reliever does not get the job done, giving up a solo homer, and the game is tied at four. Heading into the ninth, still tied, it's again Luis Garcia in the non-save situation, getting Bryant to ground into a sweet double play, and we're going to extra innings. Believe it or not, the East would score two in the top of the tenth, but then Andrew McCutcheon did this in the bottom of the tenth, a two-run shot off Sean Doolittle for the blown save, and we're now tied at six. In the eleventh, Marlins ace reliever Kyle Baraclaw holding it down, striking out Votto looking. Fast forward to the 13th, the NL Central's third long reliever on the roster, Michael Lorenzen of the Reds, enters. And he'll get Nationals Reserve outfielder Brian Goodwin, a replacement for Bryce Harper, to ground out on a nice play by Jeanette. You're not going to believe this, but in the 14th, Baraclaw strikes out Votto looking again, just like he did in the 11th. Now to the 15th, Goodwin comes to bat again, but this time with two runners on, and he rips a triple into the corner, past the sliding Votto, one run will easily score from third. That's Trey Turner's blinding speed at first. He'll score two. It's an 8-6 to six East advantage. And coming on to close it out, Matt Albers, formerly of the Nationals. He just signed a free agent deal with the Brewers, so he's now pitching against his own future divisional all-star team. And for his first batter, he strikes out Anthony Rizzo. Then, after a walk to Tommy Pham, brings up Domingo Santana, Albers induces the fly ball to, who else, Brian Goodwin, who makes the catch and seals the fate for the NL Central. And the player of the game is not the guy who hit the go-ahead triple, but Daniel Murphy, who had one hit in this game, a homer that we didn't get to see in context, so that's cool. There's a good hero shot of Murph right there, as the Aries Fantasy Astrology second baseman flips away the bat with some flair. And as we look at the final line score, join me for the next series, Coming soon.